I was a pre-engineering student before switching to agribusiness, which, uh, you know, involves a lot of math, science, business courses, and the like. But, you know, if you go to a university, they make you go to all the other departments. And one of the courses I took was a history class oriented around uh, women's history post-Civil War in the United States. And I'd have to say that was a class I didn't know I needed to take. It definitely opened up my eyes and made me a far more well-rounded individual. And the fact that it's not something that you learn really in high school and it's only exposed to people, you know, in a college classroom is kind of depressing. But at the same time, I think it really just speaks to the, you know, like being a more well-rounded and enlightened individual just generally makes people better. So I was just curious if uh, any of you folks that have gone to university had any class that was, you know, like eye opening that, you know, really kind of changed your worldviews or I guess perspectives at all, or if you've always been correct. Uh, I remember reading, uh, I got assigned uh, Karl Marx's German ideology in a 19th century philosophy class. And this was during the, uh, the financial crisis, like 2008. And it, I remember, I remember vividly like those class periods and like it sort of being uh, a bit um, eye-opening. Um, but also, what I remember e- even more was like how it seemed like d- dead. Like no one's even thinking about this really. Like like this is like some guy. It, w- what strikes me is how much how relevant Marx has come over over the last like decade plus since I've been out of college but that was definitely it and there was another class in my English department after I had changed majors a few years later um, but that was uh, literature and money and we read a bunch of different stuff we had like The Jungle by Upton Sinclair um, uh, Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy and also some Ayn, that's where I read uh, two Ayn Rand books The Fountainhead and uh, uh, which is the other one um, Atlas Shrugged Atlas, Atlas Shrugged. Shrugged yeah yeah Atlas Shrugged is brutal to read um a very repetitive book but uh uh really like a tax on Ayn Rand followers lives really the length of that book but um yeah those those are the classes that come up for me uh for me uh you know I, it wasn't really anything in school honestly i guess because i went to an art school like i went to film school and everyone there pretty much was already fairly uh progressive in their views and so going in there you sort of already were if you wanted to go there pretty much already <laughs> um music was a much bigger factor in my pol- my political change as well as working on this show very early on in early 2011 um, working at the majority port when I was still in my like early twenties, when I first started there was, uh, was way more, uh, <laughs> eye opening than anything I learned in college when it came to politics, at least. Thanks for the call. Kowalski. Oh. Or, uh, Brandon. Oh yeah. You guys got anything? Yeah, if you want to go, Brandon, you can go first. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't think anything specifically sort of curriculum wise was what led to my change in terms of like political awakening or interest in politics. I know I started college in 2009. And so for me, it was mostly the just like the context that I started college in like post 2008 or like, you know, during the 2008-2009 bailout, first year of Obama, first, you know, few years of Obama being kind of a letdown that kind of got me interested in the political you know, uh, environment around me, both in terms of local politics, but also just in the way politics works at the national level. And in my background is in anthropology and sociology. So a lot of my classes were just generally about uh, you know, research methods and social sciences, the way in which we think about like information from the past, et cetera. And so, you know, when I first started getting involved in media, I felt that there was just not a lot of people being as reflexive enough about where the information that they were getting was coming from and how they were interpreting stuff. So really, you know, I guess I credit it mostly to like a different shifting environment. Uh, you know, I went to a relatively small college, I mean, high school and then also relatively small college. Uh, but I think that like most people, my high school and education uh, 
up until that point was kind of like, I don't know, homogenous in terms of the people that I was being exposed to and the ideas that I was being exposed to. And it wasn't until like college I started being, I started meeting different types of people from different backgrounds, international students, people who were, you know, uh, from different parts of America, not just from New York City. And I think that does a lot to uh, change how people view the world. And it's another reason why our particular public school system, which is very, you know, in many ways, uh, still segregated by socioeconomic status and racial uh, demographics ends with people not necessarily having a lot of exposure to different types of people until they go to college. And in some cases, that's just not an, it's already too late for people's ideas about those people to be changed. Uh, yeah, I, that, uh, speaking to that point, Brandon, especially like where I came from, from like I, I grew up in like suburban New Jersey in a very like affluent, like lily white suburbs, so, like finding any like real critiques of like, you know, mainstream or corporate politics were like few and far between. So it would be either so, something you kind of would have to discover yourself or like luck into. So I did I did take a course in high school where it was it was like a, se a senior seminar where one of our um, big projects was to um, essentially de devise a lesson plan on one on one subject. And I'm Iranian, like my mom is Iranian, so I've always been interested in his in the history of Iran. And like we had done something big about like is America exceptional or not? Like we had like a big debate, and like I was on like the other side, and like I I felt I did not feel super equipped to be, to even like be a part of that debate because we had never really learned anything to like prove otherwise really in the sense of so much of the so much of the curriculum was kind of always tracing this narrative of, of america regardless of of any sort of mistake or any sort of um indignity kind of bending towards some sort of heroism or bending towards some sort of benevolence or some or some rounding out to being like you know at the end of the day they were really trying their best you know um american politicians and things like that but then I decided to do my project on the 1953 CIA coup in Iran, which um ultimately deposed the first democratically elected leader in Iran, Mossadegh, because um, he was trying to nationalize Iranian oil. And when I read that, it, I read, when I read about that closely, I never looked at both American politics the same way, nor about nor American capitalism or American foreign policy. And I think that guides me today because, because even as far back as when Eisenhower was president, um, that I think the undercurrents of of every other war that we went into basically had the same idea that our export was never democracy. Our export was always capitalism. Are you out in the fields, uh, Kowalski? Sounds like you're, there's, a, there's a nice, brisk September wind behind um, you. Yeah, sorry about that if it's making a ruckus, but uh, seed corn harvest is underway. I'm running part of the plant, so I'm outside in this balming 97-degree heat. So. All right. Um, Thanks for your uh, call. No, that was oh. cool. I like your guys' perspectives, and uh, have a good one. Death to monarchy. Long live the republics, oh. and maybe we should go a little further than republics. See ya. See Thanks Kowalski. for the call, Kowalski. Always a pleasure.